Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Darkwood. Let's continue, shall we? Alright. This is it. So now, I'm going to be going for that tree. That's it. I'm going for that tree. And I'm going to hope I get out. All there really is to it. I'm just going for it. It worked. Only ashes remain of the tree. I feel I'm approaching the end of my journey. Is it possible? Yep, this is it. The old man is gone. Did I do it? Is this it? Did I beat it? a map. The colorless goo sips from the cracks of the asphalt. The crossed out sign reads dark wood. It's a crippled old man from the village. The road home. Why is there so many bodies? Twenty-five kilometers to the nearest town.
epilogue. That's definitely different. All my stuff is gone. Oops. <laughs> and they're gone. Who's gonna eat the bread now? Hopscotch, I never understood it. My first floor neighbor. Good day. Good day to you. Mailbox mine is located the opposite of the basement stairs. My mailbox. I think there's something inside. A postcard from my parents. I'll read it later. Potato stacks. This is my staircase. It's been here since I remember. Weird that no one ever tried to steal it. It's probably the work of that little punk from the third floor. Boss. Can I spare change? You're waking my kid. Get the heck away. Pleased to see you, mister. I haven't seen you in a while.
They're still green, even though I've never seen anyone tending to them. Maybe they feed on discarded cigar cigarette butts. Apparently, someone was too lazy to bring it down the stairs and threw it in the trash. They're still green. Uh, yeah, don't care. Uh, don't care. It's probably the work of the kids from the neighboring apartments block. Home sweet home. I don't want to leave my apartment. It's my wardrobe. I should change first. I have no choice. I'm barely standing on my feet. I'll take a bath tomorrow. My friend a washing machine. I spent two days in the queue to get it. I made you some soup. Heat it up. Those trusty gas though. There's still some soup in the pot. Turn on. The smell fills the entire kitchen. I grab the largest dish from the closet under the sink and pour myself a bowl. It's not much, but it's enough. I don't remember the last time I've eaten a home dinner. Excellent. Something ain't right. Sirzik, good boy. Good boy. Is there any other options? Oh, no, nope, no. Nope. I, I want to see if there's like I can talk to him or something. Well, not talk to him, but. The black and white Reuben, a real luxury, unfortunately, is broken. Very tired, I prefer to lie down in a regular bed. my bed. The white crumpled sheets look as if just woken up. At last. I feel my sore legs buckling underneath me, my body becoming heavy and overwhelmingly lethargic. It's a grueling journey. 25 days of human torment. With my last strength, I stop myself from falling asleep. Something forces me to move away from the bed. Did I forget to do something? I just don't trust it, man. I know, it's annoying, but I really don't trust this. <sighs> I think I'm just gonna have to do it. So dating warmth washes over me, a warmth of security and happiness.
What am I doing? Oh, I took off my shoes. Is that it? The rustle of the woods stretching away to the horizon kept the stranger awake for a long time. Eventually fatigue washed over him and the man fell into a deep, much desired dream. Burning the tree opened the road home for many anguished inhabitants of the forest. Only three outcasts dressed in old rags and scraps lamented it over his charred remains. The doctor, fearing the revenge of the man dressed in the scarecrow costume, disappeared deep into the wilderness. The unfathomable visions that haunted him eventually led the local physician to the edge of madness. In the end, however, they became obvious transmissions, and the forest became his new home. So the doctor never made it out. Before the villagers left their homes in search of food, they rushed into the hut of the woman living with the chickens to reinvigorate themselves before the journey. They did not satisfy their hunger completely, but nevertheless they left quite uncontent. The chicken lady, deprived of the company of her beloved chickens, filled with excruciating despair and burning hatred towards the villagers, stayed in an abandoned village and continued tending to her sister. However, her determination was not met with appreciation. After many weeks of fighting off starvation, the chicken lady died, thus becoming her beloved sister's final meal. When left to her own devices, the chicken lady sister freed herself and set out to hunt for fresh meat. Piotrix rose above the treetops and his rocket made out of scrap. He smiled as peeking through the small plastic window of his spaceship. He saw the Milky Way stars moving away at huge speed. The barricaded cottage at the swamp became a prison for the three children. The oldest boy kept locked in his room following his escape attempt, would long remember his only journey through the woods and the visit in the house overgrown with white mushrooms. When the stranger took the boy from the mushroom-infested hut, the old lady who owned the place fell into a deep slumber. When the door to the house opened again after many weeks, only a rocking chair overgrown with white mushrooms was found inside. That's it. We did it. Hello, for me. Hello and welcome back. So you saw it ended. And I kind of knew a little bit of something when we got to a certain point. It's been a while since I played. Um there is multiple endings and there was a very special ending so if we recall there was a lot of weirdness that was kind of going on it just didn't seem right so I'm going to be figuring out what is wrong and unlocking the true ending or at least one of them I kind of have a guide here to kind of tell me what I, someone need to do. I don't have all the information. I didn't read it fully ahead. I just know a few things I need to do to kind of get this ending because I really wanted to check it out. So it's been a long while since I played. I think at least a week or two since I last played. But I, I kind of really wanted to get this ending. Sorry! Mm.
All right. <clears throat> First is this. So first we need to find a certain room. Here we are. So we're supposed to fall asleep. If you recall, that's kind of what we did at the end. We fell asleep. So in a way, we're trying to stop that from happening. <clears throat> I think it's down here. Yep. Boss. Got any spare change. Stupid cow. Home sweet home. Miss me? These roots are growing out from under the floor panels. These roots are growing out from the floor panels.
My dog's missing. Well. I do it all? I think I got it all. Oh, I have to keep removing more of the floor. my bed. The white crumpled sheets look as if it's just woken up. At last. I feel my sore legs buckling underneath me. Look closer. <clears throat> Fighting off the sleepiness was with difficulty, I lean over the bed. The springs creak noisily under the weight of my hand as I cast a glance on the light brown construction from plywood. I notice familiar features. They are elongated and arched. I can still smell the fresh sheets and the pleasant warmth of the quilt. Look under the bed. I feel a gentle draught coming from the dark gap between the bed and the floor. Reach under the bed. My fingertips brush a thin layer of dust, coldness, moisture. I'm touching something rough, but my arm is too short to catch it. I think I need to remove the bed. Move the bed. Oh, it's not liking that.
The roots are growing from under the floor panels. Enter. Whoa, I'm naked. My hat. It's torn and covered with dried mud. They are completely destroyed. Dirty clumped hair over the woman's face. She's murmuring in her sleep, clutching a rag doll filled with straw. Now. The moon has faded. The night is here. The sleep stole over my doll. So close. Your eyes. A. I'm at the bottom of Huge Valley. I feel the dry, dusty earth pulsating under my feet. The M.A. finger sleeps soundly, embracing the remains of a child. It hums something quietly in its sleep, swaying the rhythm of a simple melody. The figure is dead asleep, unable to wake her up. The figure sleeps on money ground, resting his head on the chest of a skeleton lying next to it. Figure is dead asleep. His face is covered in mud and sticks. It clutches a shiny stone in his hand. Sleeping man looks like a skeleton coated in skin and smiles widely. They sleep, they seem happy even though they're emaciated and dirty, some of them lie dead. I hear a faint whisper, Sasic, my little Sasic, sleep, Sasic, sleep. Figure is talking in his sleep, moving his hand and is caressing someone with affection. <clears throat> Another sleeping figure. Another sleeping figure. The earth is covered with thick bundles of dry roots that creak under my feet and old broken trees. Whoa, what's going on? A pleasant wharf washes over me. Standing in front of an enormous being. Place hand on the being. I feel an overwhelming, soothing feeling of security and happiness. The vast valley at the bottom of which I can stand curves upwards, closing over my head. The rust of distant trees turn into a single, silent murmur. I feel I'm coming home to my flat, to my room with a window and a bed. I 
I feel a heat emanating from the being. I sense my pulse slowing down. A calmness. I want to rest. Come back home to my bed. I want to lie down to fall asleep. Withdraw your hand. I don't want to do it. Still, my hand pushes the being away. The warmth that was emanating from it disappears, replaced by piercing coldness. Whoa, okay. That thing is quite powerful. Um. <sighs> I think it's this way. The man mumbles in his sleep, his emaciated and dirty, but his face is radiant and calm. He clutches a rusty object covered with old beads, some weapon. Listen to the murmurs. The man is talking in his sleep. These are only the snippets of sentences. <clears throat> These are only snippets of sentences. Single words spoken gently and slowly. It's hard to find any meaning in them. Push the figure. Leave. Without opening his eyes, the man clumsily waves his hand at me, he covers his hand, head with it, and freezes. Try to take the metal item from the man. Leave. The man waves his hand again. This time he grabs my arm. Without opening his eyes, he turns his head towards me. I recognize him. He's one of us. Try to snatch the item from the man's hand, let go of the item, and leave. Leave! Can you freaking hear me? I won't let you take her! This man clutches his teeth and with the fury of a maniac uh, saliva flows from his mouth. It's hurting her. You will tear her arms out. Hit the man and grab the item. Don't! Leave her! No! Hold on. This might seem dark and messed up, but this way is the only way that ended. And it's supposed to free him. What are you doing? Leave us alone. You'll kill us all. Leave us alone! Leave us! We'll pay for this. Leave. No, why? Why?
coming. The great fire consumed the woods for a couple of days, gradually claimed many of its inhabitants. <clears throat> the fire could. doctor who holed himself up and deep in the woods tormented by the unending whispers of his absent daughter the three outcasts wearing old rags and scrap who grief stricken under the enormous completely burnt tree didn't even attempt to run the old lady overgrown with mushrooms who immobilized in her rocking chair burned together with her huts The elephant family who did not leave their house at the swamp even as the flames started consuming it. The chicken lady crushed by the roof when she attempted to carry her sick sister out of the building. And the last living inhabitants of the flooded village consumed by the flames at the very end of the road leading home. But not everyone perished. Piatric did not live to see the fire. Before the flames appeared, he rose above the tree tops and his rocket made of scrap. As he looked through the small spaceship window, he smiled for the last time, the Milky Way stars looking so beautiful even now when moving away at huge speed. There we go. Well, I hope you enjoyed this series like I did, and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye!